for today we are going to study one of the very important chapter that is new drug and clinical trial rules 2019 which is also known as ndct rules in short it is also known as ndct rules 2019 okay so these are the rules that we need to follow when we are doing the trials in india so these are the regulations that we need to follow. So we call it as NDCT Rule 2019 because these guidelines became effective in the year 2019. So these guidelines, all the guidelines, regulations are pre is are being published by the regulatory authority. So this guideline also was being published by the Ministry of Health, that is central government on the top of regulatory authorities. So when we talk about the NDCT rule, these are the regulations that we need to follow completely. So these regulations give you an idea that how you need to carry out the clinical trial, what will be the process of getting the approvals, how the ethics committee will get registered, how you can import the drug, export the drugs, and how to streamline and make the clinical trials more efficient. If you just go through these guidelines, you'll get all the details about that. So in NDCT rules, can I see you all please? So when we talk about the NDCT rules, in NDCT rules, as we know that these guidelines came up in the year 2019 on 19th March, in this NDCT rules, there are 13 chapters. How many chapters are there in NDCT rules? 13 chapters. 13, chapters. 13 chapters and there are how many rules there are 107 mm -hmm. rules that you don't need to go into detail as of now you should know about the schedules how many schedules are there eight schedules, eight schedules. so ndct rules are the regulations that we follow in india which came in the year 2019 so the question is that what we were using, which, which guidelines we were using before 2019. So before 2019, there was schedule Y. Okay. It was schedule Y. So schedule Y was being replaced with the NDCT rules 2019. So NDCT rules means new drug and clinical trials rule, which came in the year 2019 on 19th March. So these guidelines were published by the government, the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. So in NDCT rules, there are 13 chapters that we are going to study. And how many schedules are there? Eight schedules. Eight schedules and how many forms are there 27 forms so earlier we had very limited forms when we were doing the trials but with with having the ndct rules we are now having around 27 new forms Is this much clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So the same thing, the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare was notified the new drug and clinical trial rule which came in the year 2019 and on 19th March. The aim by the NDCT rules came up is to 
set up the landscape for the approval of the new drug. So if we want to launch a drug in the market or if we want to import any drug, export any drug, set up the manufacturing companies, uh, set up the labs for collection of the samples and doing the clinical trials. So all these details were being provided in the NDCT rules. So these are the guidelines which are to streamline the regulatory process. So these rules, NDCT rules are found to be applicable for all the new drugs for the investigational new drugs means the drugs that are under trial and the drugs that are in the market these rules are applicable for those drugs these rules are applicable for the clinical trials for the bioequivalent studies and for the bioavailability studies setting up of the ethics committee these guidelines are applicable to these guidelines few changes were being done in 2021 related to the definition of the centers for PAPE studies were being added in 21 in the year 2022. Chapter 3, Chapter 5, 5 Part A, 5 Part B is there to that um, few changes were being done and uh, in the year 2023 there was changes that was being done in the first schedule. So first schedule of NDCT rules talks about the good clinical practice. So when we are doing the trial in India, the GCP that we follow, those sets of rule guidelines are being stated in the schedule one. So schedule one talks about the GCP principles. Then in the year 2023 to the chapter 5, there is an edition of 5A, which was related to the clinical research organization. So if we want to set a CRO, okay, so what are the, the rules, regulations that need to be followed to get the approvals, then only the CRO can function. So like the ethics committee is only functional if it is being registered. Similarly, the CROs are functional if it is registered. Any institute that is registered is has the authority to do the trials for doing the APE study. So in short, every organization that wants to be a part of human involvement needs to be registered. Okay, so wherever the humans will be involved, those regular those authorities need to be the registered authority because we are involving the human subjects and we need to follow a lot of regulations is this much clear yes. so as we said that in dct rules has 13 chapters so the first chapter talks about the preliminary preliminary is the definitions so the terms and their definitions, definitions and their explanations are present in the chapter one. Chapter two talks about the authorities and officers. So who has the authority to provide the approval and who are the, the officers who are working under that authority. So those, these, these things we are going to discuss in chapter two. Chapter three talks about the ethics committee for clinical charts. So suppose we want to do the clinical chart. So for that, we need to have the ethics committee who needs to review all the trial related documents. So what is the process for getting the ethics committee registered? What is the process for so ethics committee for clinical trial BABE studies, that is bioavailability and bioequivalent study is the same ethics committee. So the ethics committee gave in their scope of work, they mentioned that they are, they want to review the clinical trials, BABE studies. So accordingly, they get the registration that they can review these kind of studies. Then the chapter five talks about, chapter four talks about the ethics committee for biomedical and health research. 
So this ethics committee is mainly focusing on the studies that are related to biomedical and health researches. So this ethics committee, the application process is same, but the approval is being granted in different application uh, approval uh, form.